Did you even read the law? Did you even read the bill? Do you think we're stupid? They don't like to share their tax money even though they have so much of it. Hi guys, it's Haley here back again and we're filming episode two of this new series that I just started. It's basically where I do my makeup and talk about current events, the politics, the news, what the hell's happening in the world and I just take the information. I really break it down, make it digestible, like speak about it in a way as if you were like having a conversation with one of your friends. I just kind of synthesize all the information that I've been taking in in the past week and then sit down do my makeup and have a conversation with you guys and I got such good feedback on episode one we need to be aware of what's going on in order to be able to fix this shit show when it's our turn to take over without further ado let's just go ahead and get started a lot has changed since last week I cut my hair I cut my hair by like five inches maybe you notice maybe you don't notice oh honey we notice I might look a little bit more tanner to some of you guys. I'm actually filming another video where I'm testing out a bunch of self tanners. I just tried on this face tanner last night and it's left my skin quite but the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is what's happening in Myanmar. Let me break it down to you because this stuff is scary. Myanmar is actually quite a big country. It's located in East Asia. I'm looking at the map right now. It's like right next to India, below China. Thailand is on the right of it. For the past five years, Myanmar has actually been experimenting with democracy. So they had their first elected official. And then in February, they had a military coup. It's spelled coup but you don't pronounce the P. A coup is basically when by force the military steps in and throws off whoever's leaving the country and kind of like steps in their place. So that's what a coup is. And a lot of civilians are actually being killed. And Myanmar has a pretty large population. I think a population of like somewhere in the 50s. Civilians are mad. So what they've actually done is a lot of people in these like industries like doctors, railroad workers, teachers, engineers, these are the people, the civilians that keep every country running. You need people in all these industries to keep doing what they're doing so that the supply chains work just so that life works but because they are so frustrated with their military I don't even think it's I don't even think frustrated is the word anymore people are not going to work doctors are not going to work and they're going out into the streets to protest and millions and millions of people are doing this that is the situation in Myanmar right now all these people protesting that are essential for the country to function are kind of putting the country in like this deadlock because who cares how powerful your military is and how big of a bully you are if you don't have doctors that are helping the people that live in the country if you don't have people working at the supermarket what's really sad about it is the fact that like this young generation Burmese people which people from Myanmar are called Burmese people it's getting in the way of their future you know if, if their state is a failed state when they grow up the opportunities that they have are gonna be close to non-existent they're gonna start fleeing the country and they're gonna be refugees in like Thailand or India. If you're a Burmese and you have anything to add on to what I just said, feel free to leave it in the comments. It's always a continuous conversation. That is the first point that I wanted to make sure that we were all updated on. Next up, I want to talk to you guys about the COVID updates. I actually have my vaccine scheduled for this week myself. How do I feel about it? You might ask. I know I have a platform and you know, I need to use it responsibly. I'm not one of those people that are just so 100% confident that it is exactly what we need. I think it's our only option right now and therefore I am doing my part in getting my vaccine. It's what is available to us and what's going to fix the current problem at hand. Am I super confident in it? I don't know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that multiple studies have been done, etc, etc, but I think politics has played such a, like politics has basically clashed into a public health issue. Unfortunately, truth hasn't really been at the core of politics in the recent, I don't know, ever since I was born, I can remember people being like, politics, bleh. There is definitely a mistrust there. And we vote for these people. It still doesn't mean we trust them 100%. So the generation above us is definitely failing us. If I can speak from my truth, I sound like I'm in The Bachelor. My truth in my heart is that. Um, do better for us because we don't fucking trust any of what you guys are saying, but we're doing it anyway because we're fucking scared. So yeah, I am getting vaccinated. People over 16 can easily get appointments now. I'm going to leave links down below so that you can find the closest appointment center. It's free. No one should be charging you to get your vaccine. The U.S. is actually giving out around 3 million shots a day. That's the average that we're going in right now, which even though our vaccination rates are doing pretty well, their 
there is a new variant that is a little bit more risky and, and Britain's been suffering from it, Europe's hit hard with it, and unfortunately it has trickled into the US. Like up until I think like two weeks ago, only 1% of infections was by this variant, but now that number has shot up to 27%. More people are getting infected by it. And the existing vaccines have shown that they have been pretty effective against this new variant, but there are like new conversations circulating that we might need booster shots in the upcoming year, or just like have COVID be like a regular vaccine that we keep taking. We'll see how this goes. Okay, let's do our brows, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so Kosas just recently sent me this brow pop. They've honestly been one of my top makeup brands as of recently. Okay, so this is the Kosas Air Brow, and it basically makes your brows, it's like a clear brow gel, and it just like holds them in place without making them feel crunchy. Honestly, I don't go too crazy with the brows. I just brush up and have them look nice and fluffy, which is the look that I've been going for. Something else happened in the Capitol this week. If you guys remember, there was an attack January 6th. I remember that was a day where I was like, holy shit, this is a movie. That is where our world is at the moment. But I don't mean to say this to be like pessimistic because that is not the case. Um, I think our generation is a lot more compassionate, empathetic, understanding of one another is smarter, always keeping the vibes high. However, the vibes in the Capitol were really low um, because this man rammed into a police barricade outside of Capitol Hill towards like two police officers, then got out of his car and he actually like had a knife on him. I read that he stabbed one of the police officers. So the two police officers involved, one of them is injured and one of them unfortunately died. Right after this man did this, he actually got shot. So he's also dead. His name was Noah Green. He was 25. There's an inspection going on. They don't really know like all the points, like why he did this. I mean, he's dead, but they're kind of like looking into his social media to see what like he had been posting. And they found something that really stood out to me where he posted, he was like, I lost my job. There was a lot of stuff about how he doesn't trust the CIA and FBI. And they, you know, are like following him. And um, obviously we don't know how much of it lies in truth, but I do think that the final stages of capitalism that we're getting to is really messing with people. I'm not saying like capitalism is why this man, you know, went and like crashed in the Capitol and killed someone. There is a very visible pattern that people are really, really upset with COVID happening, people losing jobs, people didn't work for months. It's not the most thriving situation that we've been in. I think that is gonna keep showing its effects in this way. Like people are really, really tired. And again, it's not like a direct cause and effect situation here, but I just thought it was interesting that he had recently posted that he had lost his job. And I don't know why, but it's like every time something like this happens and they look into their social media and their posts, there generally is this like distress that the person who like ended up doing this thing had been feeling. I feel like we should take better precautions of that. Maybe there should be like a system where, if, you know, if someone in our bubble, like someone we follow, you see them posting stuff like that, maybe we we let someone know like, hey, but then again, who do you tell? You know, if the police system was there to really protect us, some other things that I'm about to be talking about in this video, I wouldn't have to be talking about in this video. Biden actually announced a multi-trillion dollar infrastructure plan. And maybe you've heard that word infrastructure. It's one of those big words that we hear on the news a lot. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, help me, like the skeleton of America, like break it down for me. So infrastructure is basically like the entire structure of this in entire country. So it's a lot of money. And I'm like, where are they getting this money? I listened to this economist that was saying, you know, well, first of all, Biden wants to raise taxes for corporates. And a lot of people are always like so scared whenever that's being said, like, oh my God, raising taxes. But yo, you're chilling. If you make less than 400K a year, you're really chilling. No one's going to touch your taxes. Before Trump, corporate tax rate was like 35%. And then Trump brought it down to 21%. And now Biden, Biden is raising it up to 28%. Who it's really gonna affect is those really rich people that are a little bit selfish. They don't like to share their tax money even though they have so much of it. They like to take it to Turks and Caicos and Bermuda and not on vacation. Let me tell you that. Probably on vacation as well, but you know, they have a little side hustle going on there. And what the fuck? 
y'all don't live there. So in this infrastructure plan, there's a lot of like reconstruction of roads and bridges. Fixing things like pipelines that might have lead in them also contributes to fixing issues like racial inequity. Investing in like a low carbon emission economy, even though it might sound like, you know, it's benefiting the economy and it's benefiting climate change. How these things are doing also affects the racial inequity. The bad side effects of all of these is felt more by people that are minorities and like just lower income communities. So just investing more money into innovation, like electric cars, stuff like that. So that's what his infrastructure plan is all about. To pay for it, they want to raise taxes. The total amount would be spent in like eight years, but then to pay for it would take 15 years of raised taxes. People that make a lot of money are against it. And people that make a lot of money pay Republicans to also be against it. Republicans are obviously pushing back. And it's not that they don't agree that there needs to be like an infrastructure change. They just don't agree in the way that it should be paid for. And then I, I was kind of looking into it. I'm like, okay, well, how do they want to pay for it? They want to do things like, you know, if someone is using a bridge, let's make it like you have to pay to go on the bridge. We're back again to the point of having the poor people that need this help to begin with. You want them to pay for it essentially. Okay. If you drive a lot, then there's like a tax that you pay on the miles that you drive to reduce the carbons. Okay, that's not gonna affect people that are rich to begin with if they're paying, you know, like mileage money. It's gonna affect the people that can barely afford gas money. Now you wanna make them pay for driving a lot of miles. It just doesn't add up. I wonder how this will go. I don't even think they need every Republican's vote to pass this. I think they just need every Democrat's and they can still do it. We'll see how this plays out in the upcoming weeks. I'll keep you guys updated on that infrastructure plan. The next thing that I wanna talk to you guys is about the new voting laws that have been passing around in the country. A lot of Democrats are calling them actually suppression laws, but Republicans are calling them, you know, ways to make sure that the voting system is safe and secure and won't end up causing any more fraud in upcoming elections. They're basically saying we're just taking like precautionary measures, but it's just funny to me that these first round of laws came out in Georgia, which Georgia was a state in this presidential election that actually flipped from being a Republican voting state into a Democrat voting state for the first time in years and years and years. A lot of this was actually due to the turnout of black voters in Georgia. And a lot of the voting laws that they're passing in Georgia right now are gonna be disproportionately affecting the black voters. Isn't it? It's like, do they think we're stupid? Literally, like I could sit down an eight year old and be like, A, B, C, this is what's happening. And they would be like, oh, that's why that's happening. I listened to this guy, he was like, did you even read the law? Did you even read the bill? There is nothing about suppression on it. I got a comment on my last video saying like, your viewpoint on these issues clearly stood out, whereas I would rather you deliver the news and kind of keep your bias or your opinion out of it. Which if I was a legitimized journalist, I 100% understand where you're coming from. But we're just doing a makeup talk show here. CNN doesn't do it. Fox News doesn't do it. Why do I have to do it? I'm doing a YouTube series. Let me know what you think about that one. Anyways, and let me give you a little bit of details into this law because even though it was passed in Georgia, it's also passed in Iowa, Texas, Florida, they're following through. It's evident that their purpose is to make it harder for minorities to cast their votes in elections. Let me break it down for you what this bill consists of, okay? The law makes absentee voting harder. Absentee voting is basically when you like mail in your vote. A lot of us did that this year because of the pandemic. But in order to cast a vote as as an absentee, you need to show some kind of ID. Now, you might have an ID, but a lot of minorities actually don't have IDs. You know, they don't have driver's licenses. It costs money also to get an ID. Like they don't have passports, so it's like harder to show identification. And generally, if you're voting in a low income, minority dominated neighborhood, they don't have as many people working at the voting station. So you tend to be waiting in these long lines and there would always be these third party organizations that would come in and you know, give out water and food to people who'd been waiting in line for a long amount of time. And that was completely banned. Now you can't go give water to someone who's been waiting in line for like five hours. Do you see a bunch of rich white people waiting in line for five hours? No, 
They are limiting drop boxes, but they are also adding some kind of expansions. Like they're adding more machines and staff to places where there's longer lines. But there was actually another restriction proposed that did not go through. And when you hear it, it just makes it so clear what this is all about, which is banning people from voting on Sundays. So a lot of black churches, especially in Georgia, they would organize for churchgoers to be able to vote. And that was a way of getting like more turnout in these elections from black voters. So if you're proposing a restriction to eliminate voting on Sundays, especially when this day is so important for the black community to have people register, it's it's just so like, it's in your face. This bill went through in Georgia and the MLB, the Major League Baseball, actually pulled out one of their 2021 All-Star games that was supposed to take place in Atlanta as a way of like showing their activism and being like, we're not going to be playing in a state where they're literally like outright being racist and creating these election laws in these historically Republican voting states. Now that they're like flipping and starting to vote Democratic, it's like such an attempt to reshape those voting laws to their own advantage while they still can. And it is ridiculous. It is 2021. America goes to all these other countries to be a pioneer of democracy and then does this in their home base. Well, I don't know where my eyelash curler went. She gone. She said goodbye. I think I used this last time, the Benefit Their Real Magnet Mascara. The Their Real Mascara was like my OG mascara growing up. But I like switch my mascara quite often. I just like get bored and I move on to the next one. And then I always end up coming back to the ones that I've used previously. And then ask myself like, why did I ever stop using this? Like it's so great. But then I do it again. Where I switch it again. So Derek Chauvin, who is the Minneapolis police officer that murdered George Floyd 10 months ago now, he has been on trial. It's gonna be a four week trial. A lot of witnesses are coming in, people that were in front of the Cup Foods, which is the grocery store that this incident happened in front of. So George Floyd had gone in there to buy a pack of cigarettes and gave a $20 bill that was actually fake. It was a counterfeit bill. And then the 18 year old guy working there noticed that and he told his manager and the kid actually literally offered to pay for the $20 bill out of his own pocket because the manager kept telling him like call the police on this guy like call the police on George Floyd the amount of guilt and trauma that all of these witnesses are carrying is so heartbreaking. I really hope that they're getting some kind of like mental health support throughout all of this. There was this one girl who was 18 who literally says like, I cry before bed and I apologize to George Floyd that I didn't do anything more. What's really sad is that there were police on the scene whose literal job is to protect citizens. But if a civilian that was a witness on the street is feeling guilt for not doing more, that already gives you the whole answer as to what this trial is trying to break down and understand. Derek Chauvin is on trial and he is the police officer that knelt on George Floyd's neck for over nine minutes and killed him. So in a trial, there's the defense. So whoever's on trial, there's like the team that like the lawyers that protect the person on trial. So that in this case is Derek Chauvin. So they're trying to prove that Derek Chauvin did not murder George Floyd. The thing that they're using like, or like their number one defense tactic is using the fact that he had methamphetamine in his system, he had fentanyl in his system, which are basically like painkillers. They're really heavy pills. So they're trying to make the point that what killed him was actually like a drug related overdose. And it wasn't the fact that someone had his knee on his neck while he literally was saying, I can't breathe more than 20 times or 10 minutes. And while people around them were literally saying like begging him to stop. Two of the paramedics that came to the scene um, also gave their testimonies they literally said like there was no sign of life when we saw him george floyd's girlfriend also testified and she had said yeah we've been struggling from drug addiction in so many other scenarios when people come out and they say they have drug addiction they are really like welcomed with support and help and assistance i don't know like i've been watching like for example the demi lovato documentary where she's literally being so raw and honest about how she overdosed on heroin and even after she overdosed two weeks later she went and did more heroin 
because she keeps saying like, I had emotional trauma. I was addicted and I just needed like spiritual growth through this. This whole entire community, they're here to help. But then when this man has a drug problem and he's abusing it, it's met with brutality. People spin the narrative to their own advantage and we're just on our seats watching how this is gonna play out. The longest serving police officer in the Minneapolis Police Department also testified and said what Chauvin did was completely unnecessary. He condemned him. He said like he was in handcuffs. He couldn't have been posing an enormous threat. He said using his knee is not something Minneapolis police officers are ever taught. So that was week one of the trial so far. When I film another one of these videos, I'll obviously keep you guys updated with how it's continuing. I just think it's it's really cruel that they're using this as a tactic when in reality like when people suffer from drug use we should be empathizing with them because this is not the stigma that we want to place on addiction we have completed the makeup look those are all the topics that I want to cover today if you guys have any comments concerns feedback I'm open to all of it feel free to use the comment section as you desire you can even email me if you want to if you watch until this point I just want to say thank you I think you're someone that cares not about me but like just about what's happening and I think that it's something to be proud of because a lot of people don't care make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed so that you can watch these videos as I keep uploading them I will see you guys in my next video I love you guys so much bye